I never watch Russian television. Maybe even I should, but I cannot. Because it is really bad for your health, both mental and physical. Tons of cheap and primitive propaganda broadcast by one and the same people for decades. And also lots of faces of Putin riding a bear, kissing children and smiling looking at the victims of Ukraine. This is a very ugly and terrible sight, so I warn you, never watch Russian television. In times when there was no internet, television was the main source of information, especially for those who are lazy to read. And Soviet television was extremely full of propaganda and pretty boring. Today we will try to have a closer look at most popular programs and the information they conveyed on Soviet television. News were broadcast on all the channels and one of the most popular TV shows of that informational dimension was Vremya, which can be translated as time. Today we often complain that too many bad messages, too many problems in the world. News in the Soviet Union were always positive because everything is good in the country of Soviets. Many numbers, many messages from people who are far away from Moscow, interviews describing the progress on the factories and the collective farms and positivity everywhere. But sometimes, end of the program, some problems are needed. And then information came from the rotting and decaying West. Sufferings in the USA, poor children in European countries and all the other problems you can predict were happening only outside the borders of the Soviet Union. Special attention was paid to the personalities of TV news presenters. They were ideologically perfect, spoke with very confident voice and continued working for decades so that you had no doubts and felt like this is your close friend. Of course, the news did not work as news in general. If we take one of the most serious tragedies in the life of the Soviet Union, in the life of the planet and in particular in the life of Ukraine, Chernobyl catastrophe, we will see how perverted the attitude to information was. When this catastrophe happened, for days nothing was on the news. And when it became known to the rest of the world that huge doses of radiation went into the air, polluted everything, poisoned people and started killing thousands, they had to say something. And the messages that appeared in Soviet Union news were pretty positive, like the party and the responsible people are doing everything and there is no need to worry. That's why hundreds of thousands of Ukrainians went out on parades when the air was polluted with radioactive elements. And perhaps hundreds of them died later just because on the news everything was perfect, as it was in the USSR in general. Soviet Union propaganda was present everywhere on television, in songs, in cartoons, in television films, but there were separate propaganda TV shows that depicted important aspects of communist life in the very best life. For example, a TV show about life in the army known as I Serve to the Soviet Union. Despite various tragedies and problems, for example, in Afghanistan, despite Dedovshchina that was so popular and is popular in the Russian army, the life there was depicted as idyllic. Another example is the Nines studio show where a couple of experts were constantly describing the problems of the rotting vest, different conspiracy theories and predicting the fall of the USA. But we see that the fall of the USSR came much sooner. Another example is a TV show known as International Panorama, which showed some information about life abroad, but of course in a negative way. Still, many Soviet citizens loved watching it, not listening to the information, but simply observing beautiful landscape from Paris or 
other European capitals, for example. But ideology must be present everywhere, and separate propaganda programs were broadcast in prime time. We all know how boring various party meetings are. But in Soviet Union they lasted for days, literally for days, and were broadcast on central TV channels. And many people were obliged to watch them and discuss them later in their institutions, demonstrating how important communist ideology for them are. Addresses of political leaders, celebrations and other stuff were often present and people had to watch them, because nothing else mattered. Humorous shows were also popular, but humor was very much controlled. And typically people joked about lazy directors, some problems of uh, production and, of course, once again, rotting West and poor capitalists. Soviet television of the 80s reflected serious problems in its society. During this period, lots of psychics and healers appeared on the screens and collected millions of Soviet citizens. Later, they went on tours and then collected millions of people on stadiums. Soviet citizens started believing in various mystical things and totally fake theories. Alan Chumak charged water via television sets. People were encouraged to put bottles with water and to charge them. And the family could charge like five, seven bottles to be healthier and happier. And millions of them watched and believed in that. He also sold his photographies and promised that they will protect the houses and help people to heal the problems they have. And that is in Soviet Union that claimed to be a materialistic country and denied religion. Anatoly Kaspirovsky was another psychic capable of hypnosis. He was more popular than the most popular boys' bands of the 90s or 80s. He collected stadiums of people and promised to solve all the problems, all the medical problems of all those who come to visit him. He practiced hypnosis, he promised that scars of previous operations will dissolve, that he is able to conduct an operation without anesthesia, and that, for example, your gallbladder stones will disappear after a conversation with him. What is worse, he became super popular all over the Soviet Union and soon gained even some political power. Another psychic whose phenomenon was officially studied by Soviet Union scientist was Juna. She practiced TV shows too and something like a distant massage. Still cannot imagine what that is, but the problem is that Juna consulted Brezhnev and other communist political elite. I do understand there are lots of TV shows now, mystical TV shows, that describe super abilities. And it is your right to believe that such things can exist. But in Soviet Union it reached the level of enormous support. Hundreds of millions watched these psychics and healers. They believed they wanted to find some solution. And perhaps it is a demonstration of a really deep depression that Soviet society was in. I think you can understand how Ukrainians feel about Russians. No, it is not just the Putin's war. I like to quote Churchill. If the country is run by a dictator, it is not only the dictator to blame. But a part of hatred, anger, pain, we sometimes try to understand what is wrong with Russian society. And recently I have come across one pretty funny explanation that today's Russian society is actually the very same society that charged this water in front of TV sets at the end of 80s. And if people were able to believe such things, they are able to believe Putin's propaganda. We have to understand that special military operations, informational operations, take place daily. 
And they are not only targeted on Russia, inside Russia or on Ukraine. They are targeted to different countries of the world. I have checked and Russian TV shows are broadcast to 160 countries of the world and are conducted on 40 different languages of the world. It's a pity that Ukraine's voice is not that strong. I am not going to name the people responsible for the dissemination of Russian propaganda. I believe they have to be taken to trial just as the Nazi propagandists, and maybe one day we will see them in the hog. And among the typical examples of Russian propaganda are news where Ukrainians bomb themselves, where we crucify Russian children or eat Russian soldiers. Very often they also fake the speeches of European and American leaders trying to demonstrate that Americans or Europeans support special military operation in Ukraine. Uh, they fake their success and when they retreat, leave Kherson, for example, they describe it as a gesture of goodwill and one of the strategic steps needed for the disposition or something like that. Russian television is very Orwellian and if you want to see it and you have a very strong brain, you can try, but don't spend too much time because it is poisonous and bad. Seeing the crimes of Bucha and Irpin, made the world frozen with fear. Because these are examples of true crimes against humanity. Something we could not imagine is possible in the 21st century in the center of Europe. But with modern technologies, with satellite images, with people fixing it all on their mobile phones and sending, sometimes even before death, to the relatives via social media, all of that became evident, obvious, and the true face of Russia is really terrifying. This time, despite the fact that they claim all of that is fake, and Russians choose to believe, I stress choose to believe, their own propaganda, because internet gives you access to any kind of information that you want to check and you don't need much skills, they choose to believe this propaganda. Luckily, contrary to 2014, Ukraine won the informational war and soon we will win this war in this military aspect too, with the support of our allies, of course. There are many bad habits that can kill you like smoking or drinking too much alcohol and watching Russian television can go on the top of all that. Poisoning brains of their own citizens, they try to poison the brains of global people, but they failed and now everybody knows the true face of Russia. Remember, they also hire opinion leaders of vloggers try to push their soft propaganda. And if you want to watch some vloggers online, why not watch Ukrainian, for example, me, Anna from Ukraine, with my list of war in Ukraine updates. <laughs>